see if I can get this to work. Let's move some idea out. But um, I've drawn a model. There. It's not the one that you you posted because I, I couldn't get the Dropbox to open properly. And I just thought it doesn't matter. You get, give you an idea anyway. So um, select on the model. Um, go to File, Export Selected. Um, oh, I can't minimize that. Let me bring that over. Basically, saving it uh, as a uh, STL file. Um, I've already done it, like I say, so uh, I'll not do it again. And then, if you click on the curves, I put them on a different layer, just select objects, um, and then you want to. Export selected. Um, oh, once replace it, yeah. Oops, uh, no, bear, it, bear with me. Uh, export selected, um, and then you need to ex change that to the DXF file, um, which I don't want to show off the screen. I think this in it, but basically. That's the important bit there. Uh, R12 lines and arcs. Um, so that's your curves and your model um, done, um, which you probably knew anyway. But <laughs> um, and then if we um, Despro oh now um, file, you want a load geometry, um, and we want the STL file. So that's our um, wiggly bit, um, and then if you click onto this bit here, uh, add 2D operation, click onto that, and then open that up, um, and it'll say 2D file. Now it's not got one loaded, so we click on brow uh, browse, and then that's a DXF file that we've saved. So if you click that. Um, now, all these only uh, change into whatever you, you're running them at and stuff. But um, now, if you look, the curves are there on the bottom. Um, it always puts them in at zero, so it's important to set this at zero on your um, there on your middle of the world origin. I presume, anyway. It's, um, so, um, and then what we need to do, uh, if we go into this, uh, your machining level is how deep you want the, um, the, the bit to cut, I suppose. Um, so, uh, um, yeah, well, I'll do it, I'll do it. Like this to demonstrate something there, so apply apply that. Uh, they can all get left, uh, that can get left. And now, if you click this one, project 2D contours onto 3D part geometry, um, that'll then project those curves up onto the top of here. Um, so um, let's just so we've got a ball nose radius six mm cutter. I'll just do it as a, that for now. Um, then you've got bead rate spin to spin. Just to give you an idea, you can set them up. I knew set them up anyway. Now, if you go to create tool paths, calculate tool paths. Now it's done an up and operation on top of that. Um, but the important things. Ah, right now that's an interesting one. Can you see all that's dead, dead stepping? Um, if you go into that um, precision x and y, set that to 0 0.1. Nice. I mean, you can, again, you can the position that you want, you can, uh, but it'll, it'll take longer to work out if you start going dead down. Um, Now what I was saying before with that machining thing, probably can't see now, but 
that is actually 0.1 off the top. Um, if you know, oh, it's, it's, it's hard to see the other way. If you do it 10 million foot, oops. Oh, hang on, that's why. Uh, 1 million. See there, that's a milli above it. Obviously, that's no good, but what I found is I mean, um, minus point two Actually, seeing that's the thing that's a bit weird about it, but <laughs> they are there. <laughs> um, if you save that out, then um, well, whatever you save it in and do it as anyway, and that, and, and that will have tool path the you know the um, scripting after it's done the, the roughing, but that's just you know quickly set up. If you're doing flat bits, you can probably just do it with a flat, a flat mill, but flat ended mill. Um, you just have a tight step over and that'll make it clean, but I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, hope that helps anyway.